standing erect, looking forward, arms on the side, and the palms facing forward. Four things, right? Which are, what's the first one? Standing erect. Second one? The second one is um, looking forward. Third? Um, arms outward. And yeah, from the side, outward. And uh, palms Last, upward. Palms facing, facing outward. Outside. This is important because this is always your reference point and also your right is always the right, the left is always the left. Usually it's the patient's right and left. Right. And then whichever way you turn around, your right or left doesn't change. And your orientation doesn't change. They <coughs> want to trick you. They, if I ask you, is my palm above or below my shoulder? What would you say anatomically? Think. Is my palm above or below my shoulder? Above. Not above. Anatomically, you have to think of your reference point. Okay? The position we talked about, so it's always below. I was just tricking you, okay? So you have to remember that always. Okay? Everybody good with that? Yes. The next section is about body regions or surface terminology. How we are going to call different parts of your body. They don't use the noun, it's more like adjective, okay? If you see the front and the back of that woman or the man, anterior is the front, anterior view, posterior view is the back. So we'll go through one at a time. Sometimes we'll look at both of them. So if you have your book on page two, you have the figure you need, figure number two. So we'll go from top to bottom. I don't want to lose you, so irrespective of whichever part we are going to point to on the body, look right there, okay, so you'll find the word. So I'll try to go with the book as far as possible, as much as possible. Starting from the top, we can refer to the head as cephalic. Cephalic means the head. Also, it can mean head is at the top, going towards the top. Then, more specifically, when you refer to the skull, we are going to call it cranium. So there is a difference, right? Cephalic is the whole head, skull is the cranial region. Then coming down, you have the facial region, overall face. So the whole thing is facial. But within the facial region, what do we have from top to bottom? Can somebody read one after the other? This one person, please. Frontal. frontal. Okay. So this is your frontal. Next. Orbital is around the eye. Orbital. Next. Yeah. The frontal or pickle region is behind the mouth towards the cheek. Right here. Okay. Next. Mental, that's your chin. Then, if you see on the other side of the same figure, what do we call from the nose? What do you say? Nasal region. And around the mouth, referring to the mouth, oral. You don't see ocular in the book, ocular refers to the eye. Orbit is around the eye, ocular is more specifically to the eye. So we may need it at some point, so it's good to know. Okay, now we are down to the <coughs> word, neck. So the neck is what? Cervical. But if you look at the posterior view, the back of the neck, what are we going to call that? Nuchal. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Then this shoulder, the corner of your shoulder, there is a 
projection in the bone that we have here, they call it acromion process. So they call this acromion region right here or here. Acromial region. Then in the anterior view, if you see the armpit, they call it axillary. So your armpit is axillary. Okay. Then you have your chest. This area we refer to as <coughs> thoracic. This whole area is thoracic. But within the thoracic, you have a couple of subdivisions. One is pectoral, where you have the rib cage. And in the middle, there is a bone called sternum. So we call this sternum region. So pectoral on both sides, the middle, <coughs> sternum, uh, sternal region. So pectoral, they are both within the thoracic region. Okay. Going down, where you have the stomach and all of that, the digestive organs, that's your abdominal region above the navel. This is your abdominal region. And this is your umbilical region. The name comes from the umbilical cord that connects the baby to the mom. The hip. What do we call that? Coxal. You see the word coxal? It's for your hip. And where you have your external genitalia, that's your pubic region. When you say pelvic, it's more generic to that area. Pubic is more specific. And if you see where your coxal region and the pubic region, in between that region is inguinal. Inguinal. So this is your hip, coxal region, pubic region. Here surrounding the pubic region is the inguinal region. Then let's look at the arm, the anterior view. What do we have for the arm? Brachial. Brachial refers to the arm. The elbow, cubital. Okay, so I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put here brachial for the arm, for the elbow is cubital, and the forearm is your anti brachial region. Then we are now down to the hand. This is your hand, your arm. Here yeah, is your hand. So when you do something by hand, what do we say? Manual, right? So manual refers to the hand. And within the hand, of course, you have the palm and the fingers. The fingers are referred to as digits, and the region is digital. So these are your digits. If you have heard of phalanges, don't mix up. Phalanges are the bones that make the fingers, but the fingers are called digits. So the region is digital region. Okay. Going down the body on the leg, there is a bone by the name femur on your thigh, so that's your femoral region. Then going down further, you have the knee bone, it's called the patella, so we call that patella region. But the back of the knee, if you see on the other figure, you will see that it's a different name, starts with the same P, popliteal. Patella in the front popliteal in the back. Okay, so this is your knee bone, that's your patella region, in the back of the knee, popliteal. Don't mix them up. You see, A comes first, O comes next, meaning front and back, that helps. Then the leg, when you go down below the knee, they call it crural, <coughs> crural region. The wrist, we didn't see the wrist. I wanted to keep it for later. 
the wrist and the ankle, let's do the same thing. What do we call the wrist? Carpal region. Carpal and the ankle is tarsal. And there's a lot of <coughs> the structures, the names, the numbering, they'll be kind of uh, similar. So it will help you to, if you understand one, it will help you with the other the carpal and tarsal region when we learn the bonds later on. Then, pedal refers to the foot, pedal. Like you pedal the bicycle with the, your feet, right? Pedal. And the toes, like the fingers, we again call them digits. They also have phalanges. Digital is the region. The heel bone, anybody knows what's your heel bone? Calcaneus, correct. So calcaneal region refers to the back of your foot where you have the heel bone, calcaneal region. Okay, so I think we pretty much covered everything in the anterior view, but if you see on the posterior view, there are some more names we need to go over. Behind, just below the shoulder, this region, there is a triangular bone. We call it scapula, there's a couple of them on either side. So based on the bone, they call the scapular region. And where you have your vertebra, vertebral column, that's your vertebral region. Your spinal cord is located there within the vertebral column. Then the lower back, that's your lumbar region. Where I have Mark L, that's your lumbar region. And this is your G, the gluteal region. Can you see the word dorsum of hand? That's the back side of your hand because this is your standard anatomical position. They use ventral for the front and dorsal for the back. So that's why it says dorsum of hand. Okay, those are the body regions. Uh, let's take five minutes. I want you to make sure you label your pictures with the correct name.